James Randi, conjurer, is a scourge of the psychics. He travels the world debunking claims of PK. Randi's come to the University of California at Los Angeles to prove his case by example. In his lecture, he'll perform PK feats by trickery. For him, key bending is easy. And you might think Randy is psychic if you aren't watching his right hand. You've got two car keys. Do you drive with both hands? Or... <laughs> well, that wouldn't, wouldn't do any harm. Uh, just turn a wee bit to face the audience and let me see your hand, the clean one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you, you hold on to, these two keys are identical. You hold on to one, close it in your hand like that, hold it right up where everyone can see it, and I'll hold the other one like this, and I'll stroke it, and I'll attempt to put some mental power on it to cause it to bend. Watch this carefully now. I can feel the force leaving my body, but he doesn't seem to be bending. Maybe that way would work. Oh, I'm afraid my attraction to you has caused a very strange thing to... Oh, there's a little bit of it. Oh, it's going a little bit, but not enough. Uh, maybe the power has transferred. Would you open up your hand for me, please? A miracle. Ladies and gentlemen, will you look at that? Well, you held it in your hand. Uh, key trick in one version of about 40 different versions. But Randy's best trick, Project Alpha, took months to bring off. In 1979, aircraft tycoon James S. McDonnell gave half a million dollars for research to Washington University in St. Louis. They advertised for psychics, and Randy saw his chance. The most successful metal benders were Steve Shaw and Mike Edwards, who amazed the St. Louis researchers. Dr. Mark Schaefer. We have been working, first of all, to establish the range of abilities that Mike and Steve have, because these have apparently included being able to move small, solid objects across the tabletop, influencing a variety of metal objects, such as keys and silverware and metal bars and metal rods. I don't believe they're tricking us. But in 1983... After Edwards had amazed the audience at a New York press conference, Randy dropped his Project Alpha bombshell. I'm going to ask these two gentlemen a very simple, direct question. Can you tell us how do you do it? I'll do it. Be quite honest. We cheat. <laughs> I'm uh, happy to announce that the two young gentlemen who um, took part in Project Alpha are here with us today. Gentlemen, would you uh, stand up and take a while? Steve John and Michael Edwards. Project Alpha had to be done because the parapsychologists had to be taught once and for all something that they had denied all the time. They had to be taught that they could be fooled. They had said, we're too smart, we're too intelligent, we're too well-informed, we're too good observers. No one is going to be able to fool us. They were fooled. Shaw and Edwards were not psychics, but conjurers. This was done by a young Japanese psychic by the name of Masuaki Kyocha. He would take a spoon... Hold it like this. They fooled the researchers with standard conjuring tricks. But most of all, by distracting their attention. <laughs> all I use is just sleight of hand and misdirection and psychology. When the Mac Lab first started testing us, I would go through a process and then of, of trying to do something and failing. Then I would go back in and watch the videotapes which was very good feedback. I could see what I could get away with and what I couldn't. Uh, I noticed that one of the cameramen that was watching my hands very close up was very good. So what I would do to get him off the camera, I realized, hey, he's good at what he does. I failed on a number of tricks, set one up that was ready to go, had a spoon pre-bent and was just covering it, letting no one look at it. Ask for the cameraman to come and be used as my subject. Obviously, a lesser trained person is going to have to take the camera. That was it. That was the whole key right there. In essence, physically, the only way to bend a spoon is to bend it like that. But you've got to do it. That's what you've got to do it at the right time. 
And that's one of the problems the scientists have when they're trying to judge this. They set up the experiment to start at 4 o'clock. The trick may have been done at 3.15.